Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. It's uh, May 22nd, 2018, and today I'm going to go through weather modification companies, corporations, universities, associations, and uh, military groups. Uh, basically everybody who's controlling the weather, at least in the United States, if I made it uh, worldwide, this would be the longest video in history, but eventually we'll add all that too. I'm going to have to do a lot of translating to pull that off. But um, we're going to go through the, the article today. Um, of course, on weather, um, climateviewer.com, you can check out all of my work. This is a front page right here, all of my frequently asked question pages and all of that. But today uh, we're going to be doing this... Uh, directly on names and addresses um, get right down to the nuts and butts of who's controlling the weather um, you're not going to find this anywhere else and of course everything that I'm doing is uh, fully open source and free of charge and I appreciate my patrons over on patreon.com slash climate viewer um, thank you for your support I hope that you guys will come continue to support my work uh, it's kind of unique and you're about to see that so Come over to weathermodificationhistory.com and scroll down to the resource section or just click right here. And what you're going to see right past the news vault and my uh, article 10 technologies to own the weather today is the most important four articles on my website. Um, they sum all this stuff up. People, patents, programs, and laws. We did programs last night. Pretty epic video. Got a great response from that. And today we're going to do the people who are controlling the weather. Um, this is probably the most important part because really if you want to know who's screwing with your weather, who's making basketball size hail and flooding your hometown, uh, this is where you go. So you click on that and it's going to take you over to um, climateviewer.com and the title of the article is Weather Modification Corporations, Universities, and Derivative Traders. So that's the stock market. So I'm going to go through this pretty quickly tonight. Um, and what I want you guys to understand about this is I have not included geoengineers. Um, I'm going to do a special update on that in the near future. Um, and this is mostly who's controlling the weather in America. Um, like I said, I will be branching out to do Russia, China, and the rest, as many as I can find. Um, and I've already got some reports on here on that. We'll go through that as well. So here let me zoom this up to full screen so you guys can see everything and uh this is a this is what we use from the weather modification history logo it's a uh, collier's magazine 1954 weather made to order um this is also what's on the cover of jim fleming's book um pretty pretty epic image there man with a joystick controlling the weather so Everybody talks about the weather, but nobody, no, no, nobody does anything about it. Charles Dudley Warner said that um, it's often attributed to Mark Twain, but there's your original source. And the truth of the matter is, in today's modern society, everybody's trying to do something about the weather. So we're going to start with the military and federal government. Um, these are the facts, and you can't argue with facts. So. First up, United States Air Force Phillips Laboratory Geophysics Directorate. Um, they said that they wanted to use an airborne carbon black delivery system to be completed by 2003. This was also mentioned in the Owning the Weather 2025 papers. And you can also see that the U.S. Air Force uh, is a member of the Weather Modification Association. And their address is NASIC DACA, attention Gregory T. Marks at 4180 Watson Way, Florida, um, and that is Wright Patterson Air Force Base information right there. So yes, the Air Force is doing it. If you click the link up here at the top, you, it'll take you over to Weather Modification History, and you can actually see a Freedom of Information Act request on that, um, where they say weather modification using carbon black. I'll zoom that up as well so you guys can see it. So, and that's a Phillips lab and they give the same reasons that were in the Air Force 2025 papers and it's carbon black dust delivery systems. Pictures of that right here, you can see the FOIA and there's the second part of the FOIA. That's what's in there right there, their project plans and how they're gonna pull it off. 
And you can see over here on the Weather Modification Association, right there is the NASIC DACA. That is Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. So they are a member of the Weather Modification Association. Kind of hard to argue with that. Okay. So next up, we have the United States Naval Warfare, Naval Air Warfare Center's Weapons Division at China Lake, California. China Lake, California is the home of the cloud seeding bombs that were used in Operation Popeye over Vietnam. And to this day, um, China Lake, California is where the U.S. Navy does its weather modification uh, technology research and all that. So you can see that once again, I have a FOIA. If you right click that thing, come over here to weather modification history. FOIA reveals U.S. Navy weather modification program still active at China Lake and it's under the non-lethal warfare um, or the joint non-lethal warfare directorate, JNLWD. And it's uh, pretty, pretty creepy stuff. Um, it says right here, successful completion of the proposed effort and the follow EMD programs will give the U.S. military a viable state-of-the-art weather modification capability again. I know of no countermeasures. Because you can't really stop the weather when it's used as a weapon. There's no defense against weather weapons, and that's why they are bigger than nukes. They are, um, World War III is going on right now, and it involves weather warfare. There is nothing we can do about it um, except for raise hell, send FOIAs, and demand accountability. And that's exactly what I'm doing over here on um, climateviewer.com. You can go to my NMOD page where I have the Environmental Modification Accountability Act, and that's to bring accountability even to the military. And finally, right here, U.S. discusses future of weather warfare despite NMOD ban. This was uh, Dr. Arnold uh, Barnes from the Phillips Lab, and he goes through a series of uh, presentations following the Owning the Weather paper. Owning the Weather in 2025 was written 1995 to 96. In 1997, uh, Dr. Arnold Barnes Jr. Um, from Phillips Lab at a Joint Army uh, Air Force uh, Symposium said, let's do this thing and for all the same reasons that we're in Air Force 2025. And the list goes on and on. Oh, well, you know, NMOD's going to get in our way, but, you know, in light of the the Air Force position needs to be reevaluated in light of the past 19 years of scientific advances, in light of advanced weapon systems, which are more environmentally system sensitive, and to prepare against technological surprise. So even though weather warfare was banned in 1978, they don't give a damn because A, Russia's doing it, B, China's doing it, and C, who else is doing it? So whether you like it or not, the militaries of every country, the, at least the major ones around the world, are involved in weather warfare. And that's just, you know, mutually assured destruction, I guess. Um, and they go on way down here. Weather modification using carbon black to muddy roads, flood fields and rivers, destroy crops, things like that. And they go on to say, increase cirrus cloud cover. So that's making chemtrails, people. That's making clouds using carbon black from the military. And they say they want to do that to deny visual satellite and high altitude reconnaissance and decrease light levels for nighttime operations. So there you go. Why would the military want to make clouds and block out the sun? Oh, they do it because they're not blocking out the sun. They want to block out spy satellites because if you're going to roll your UFO out on the tarmac at Area 51, you might not want the Chinese to see that. So there's one reason, and during the Iraq war, um, if we're going to go beat up on a bunch of Iraqis and we have night vision, they do not. We can make clouds all night long and make it darker. Um, that's straight from the military's mouth. So that's the United States Naval Research, uh, our Naval Air Warfare Center Weapons Division at China Lake, California and Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, right off the gate at the very top. Next up we have... Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, where geoengineering was invented. You can see the article on that. Can Dr. Evil Save the World? A Geoengineering Tale. And it's about uh, Edward Teller, Lowell Wood, and Roderick Hyde, and how the current push for geoengineering solar radiation management came from Lawrence Livermore National Lab, a weapons um, lab. And Dr. Evil is the guy who pushed it. 
crazy stuff. Pacific Northwest National Lab, they're involved in the Silver Lining Project or the Marine Cloud Brightening Project, whichever you prefer to call it, but it's sea salt spraying boats. And uh, you can see the lit right there, Pacific Northwest National Labs. So na there's your two national labs involved in geoengineering. Oh wait, here's a third, Savannah River National Laboratory. The article is Chemtrails, Calmatives, and Terrorism. And if you scroll down to right about here, let's see, microspheres for micro worlds right here. And it says, what looks like a fertilized egg flows like water and is stuffed with catalysts and exotic, exotic nanostructures and may have the potential for, of making the current retail gasoline infrastructure compatible with hydrogen based vehicles of the future, not to mention also contributing to arenas such as nuclear proliferation and global warming. So these are glass balls made of nuclear radiation that has been, um, denuclearize i guess or who knows but regardless they're hollow glass spheres and this is the quote of the century right here then they go on to say that it can be used for things like energy independence nuclear medicine nuclear deterrence and safeguards and global warming again there's a second reference to that but this is the one the particles, consisting of a very fine special form of glass, porous walled glass microspheres, would be able to absorb a certain amount of carbon dioxide and would reflect sunlight away from the Earth. The overall goal of the task is to understand and evaluate the implications of deploying porous glasses as an agent to reduce global warming. This is putting nuclear glass balls in jet fuel to do solar radiation management and carbon sequestration same time from savannah river national lab uh, moving on down the list of course the national oceanic and atmospheric administration noaa is involved in weather modification because you have to report all of that to noaa so a lot of what you're about to see comes from these uh foias that i got and i made a, a google fusion table out of it. NOAA reported weather modification activities 2004 to 2012 and you can see a very lengthy list of who's involved in it like Atmospherics Inc, Barkin International, Barkin Fog, Fog Operations, um, on down the list. Desert Research Institute, you can see right here, operator is the person who modified the weather, sponsors who paid for it, state of Nevada. Um, so we're going to go through those as we progress through this, but you can see all of those NOAA reports right here for 2004 through 2012. I will be getting the rest of them from 2013 to present soon. And of course, you know me, I got a map of it. So right click this little guy, come over here to climateviewer.org. And on Climate Viewer 3D, you can see all of those weather modification projects in 3D. Um, so yeah, you just click on each of the little dots. It'll tell you it's the same reports that are in the spreadsheets, except it looks a hell of a lot cooler in 3d. All right. So back to the article and we kind of move on down the national science foundation. We conclude that initiation of large scale operation, operational weather modification programs would be premature as they said, but right here, if you see who's funding solar radiation management geoengineering studies, the National Science Foundation is the largest by far, followed by the European Commission, ESP, EPSRC from the UK, NERC from the UK, and the Fund for Innovative Climate and Energy Research, Pfizer, that is Bill Gates. So these are the people funding geoengineering. These are the authors writing it, Ken Caldera, Alan Robach, David Keith, Ben Kravitz, Peter Irvine. Um, the list goes on. Um, and this is from a paper called Mapping the Landscape of Climate Engineering. Next up, U.S. Department of Agriculture. Yes, the USDA is involved in weather modification. Surprise, surprise. They actually electrified water and sprayed it from an electrostatic sprayer over Texas in June of 2017. You can see the actual interviews um, from the Texas Weather Modification Association's licensing division. And you can see the information on that right here. Um, this is the actual presentation itself. 
and right about here halfway through you can see this dude invites the guy who used to work for Monsanto up to speak I think he do where is he at right here so he comes up and he sits for a minute but regardless his name is Wesley Clint Hoffman and uh, the USDA deleted his page so I went and found a new copy of it but Wesley Hoffman um, used to work for Monsanto and he has things like aerial application technology for sustainable crop production and deployed war fighter protection research program um, development develop improved timing and application technologies to reduce exposure of pesticides to honeybees hey man thank you for caring about the bees while you spray all that Monsanto shit all over the sky but regardless um, you know he does rotary wing nozzles and electrostatic sprayers so these are what you see if you if you live in the south and you've ever seen one of these mosquito mosquito spray trucks that's what they use to spray electric water over texas u.s department of agriculture funded it and got a um, exemption to do just that moving right back over here um Next up, U.S. Bureau of Land Reclamation. They do pretty much all of the weather modification on the West Coast. Um, lots of information on that. Like the Walker River Basin Cloud Seeding Project. Um, but Reclamation, Managing Water in the West. That's your federal government people, and they do fund uh, geoengineering and weather modification. So next up, U.S. Department of Commerce. That's like a duh um so you can come over and check that out but just go through